Good morning, family. You may be seated. This week we are celebrating Jesus, the prophet. I don't know about you, but I have never actually put it that way. We have celebrated Jesus as king. We've talked about him as our high priest. But to actually come under the administration of acknowledging and celebrating and receiving Jesus as the prophet. This is the first time for me. It's a big thing. So if Jesus is your prophet, the prophet of your family, the prophet of your business, would you rise and just celebrate him? Acknowledge him. Say you cannot receive the prophet and not receive from the prophet. So today expect to receive from prophet Jesus. Whatever it is you have come with, whatever it is you need, you don't even know how to ask for. Prophet Jesus is in the house and each and every one of us will have a divine encounter. Hallelujah. Please take your seats as kings and priests in God's presence. Welcome to the assembly of God's special messengers. Let's wake ourselves up. So turn to the person seated closest to you and someone that's our neighbor. Say neighbor. You are begotten of love. So leave love. Say to yourself, I am an envoy of God's love. Hallelujah. Let's go to our text on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7. We are still on our series for those that are joining us for the first time on begotten of love. We've been sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to him explain what love means. I read from the New King James Version. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, endures all things. And Amplified says love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. My focus today is actually talking about love, not living in suspicion. Because when Paul says, love believes all things, in another translation, it says, love always trusts. I perceive there is a lot about this verse that presently I haven't been able to see and grasp. So today, I will only share the dimension of it that I could immediately relate with. I feel the text from my own understanding today, I keep saying today because as I studied it this week, I realized, ah, how can one line, one word, one phrase, love believes all things. Another translation says, love always trusts. Another one says, love never gives up. How does one word have so many dimensions? So I feel there's a lot about it that personally I have not grasped. I will share the one that I can immediately relate to it. And I feel it's drawing our attention to a part of our lives that we seldom talk about. The part of what we believe about God and what we believe about people. So let me ask you quickly. That's not our focus. What do you really believe about God? Do you believe he can save? Not what do you think. Not what did the pastor say. Not what does, did your church. Not what were you taught in Sunday school. What do you really believe about God? Do you believe that he keeps his word? Do you believe that he selects those he blesses? Do you believe that everything God says is true? Do you believe when you read the word and he says whoever or whomsoever or anyone or everyone, do you believe you are part of of that because if you are carrying the NIV and it says love always trusts there's a whole lot of there's a school of thoughts there that literally says mm -mm, that one is not it but I feel God is the one person that we can give a hundred percent trust at every time he's super trustworthy 
So we can say love. If you love God, you can always trust his word. You can always believe in his word. You can believe everything he says. But that's not our, our focus for today. Uh, amplified gives us focus. It says love believes all things. Is ever, believe, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. So now I'm asking you, what do you believe about people? Because it's like God has been drawing our attention using this series to our relationships with people. Why is this question important? Whatever you and I believe, whatever we surmise about people becomes our truth of them. And Paul is saying that if you and I love people properly, if we love them appropriately, we will keep on believing good things about them. So do you believe everything you hear about others? Have you ever really thought about it? Today you come out and someone says, that woman, she's a thief. And you respond, that's their way. Tomorrow another person says, Mr. Soso and So's children do not belong to him. And you respond, Thank you for Iban, the women of this age, you cannot trust them at all. That's your response. There is no questioning of how did this come about? How did you know? Nothing. You, it's just an instant reception. And with that, you invite Mojis and sit down. I feel pastors, ministers of the gospel are the greatest subject when we talk about this. Every way you turn, you hear there is always a negative, that pastor is this, that pastor is that comment, that we all believe without asking questions or gifting them the benefit of the doubt until facts emerge to, you know, prove otherwise. Paul says that that's our human tendency. To believe everything negative, everything evil, instantly about people is not love. It's actually a revelation of the hatred that hides in the heart of men. Love does not dwell in suspicion. Believing all things as a New King James Version renders our text is choosing to deliberately believe the best about people until proven otherwise. So they say, I steal. Until you have a first-handed experience or you, caught, you catch me stealing, Paul is saying, choose to believe that I do not steal. We are beings of love. Our disposition every time something happens or something goes wrong cannot be that the parties involved are guilty of wrongdoing. And later, when the facts emerge, we find they are innocent. If you see our normal disposition, if something happens and we are just like and later we discover the wife had been ill for the past 20 years she was being managed but we had already accused the people that we would have gifted sympathy and doubt to because it's the human nature we second hand information has destroyed more individuals families, ministries than we would ever know. You know, they said that she said, that he said, that they said, that their mother said, that they said that she's a prostitute. And they said and said, this is, you are like the 10th or the 20th said, and you take it and you add your own pepe, because maybe when you talk to the next person, it sounds so light, you add your pepe, you add salt. They said she was caught in a junction. Your, when you heard, that one was not it. And then I take it, they said that she said at the junction with somebody's husband. We keep adding it up because sometimes it's just our human tendency. Love believes all things. But what do you believe? Because the all things love believe is not all things negative. It's not all things evil. We have to grow into men and women who talk only about things that are lovely and of good report. Love, we said it last week, is a place of shelter. Today I had to go back, this week I had to go back to that translation and it, it continues. Love is a place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. This roof does not, it does not stop believing that you will show up and you will still be you. 
there's a second angle to believing the best about people that stuck out to me while studying. The aspect of second and third and fourth and tenth chances. So let's say somebody offended you or stole from you. <laughs> now you meet him again and he claims, I met the Lord. I am a changed man. The human thing for me and you to do is to listen to his beautiful story and keep him as far away from our valuables as possible. After all, once beaten, twice what? Once was a mistake. Twice will be foolishness. That's how we say it in the world. Nobody wants to be beaten twice, but that's not the way of love. Love admonishes us not to be stupid or naive or gullible, but to wisely and appropriately give that person appropriate opportunities to prove his transformation. If he stole jewelry, maybe your diamonds or your gold, Try keeping 20 naira in his vicinity and give him access to where 20 naira is kept to see whether he actually met the Lord or whether he is actually transformed. Because if we, we are not a people that are given to giving each other second, third, fourth, fifth chances, we cannot achieve the unity of love, the unity that is needed in the body. I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect. And most times you know that you say I'm sorry today on one issue and two days after that same issue, you say another I'm sorry. And you, you want the other person to understand you. Love believes the best about people. Before I conclude, I want to talk quickly about believing the best about loved ones that are lost. For some of us that have brothers, that look like they are not in this world. They've not heard any of the messages preached, whether online, offline, or in church. We have children. We are here in church. Our hearts are bleeding because we have children who are addicts, who are cultists. We have siblings. We have parents who once introduced us to God, but they are not here. They are no more in God. Love believes all things in that love never gives up. So what's our responsibility to those that we have identified as lost amongst us? Don't give up on them. Keep believing that the God who saved you can save them. What you and I owe them is constant intercession. Because if you give up on them, you've actually let them go. You've donated them to, to hell. You've stopped loving them. The measure of your love of a person is, 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 is seen by how much you give yourself to praying for that person. Not what you buy for that person. Not what you give to that person. So for all of those that, all of us that have children that are lost, brothers that are cultists, neighbors that looks like they are not part of this world, they are not, they, they've not heard that Jesus is Lord. Don't give up on them. For love believes all things. Give yourself the benefit. Give them the benefit of doubt and trust the work of God who walked in you, the God who walked in you to walk in them. Love believes the best about people, not the worst. Love expects the best. Love does not second-guess people's motives. This is really difficult if you've been hurt or burned severally. Love does not impute imaginary motives on others. Sometimes what we call so our suspicion of others, you look at someone and say they are having an ulterior motive. There's something, there's a reason why that man preaches. There's a reason why she comes to sweep the church. There's a reason why this, that, very, that secretary comes early. The suspicious motive we impute on people is actually a revelation of what we would do if we had the opportunity. So because that is what you would have done if you were that person, you think that person is doing that. She is clapping because she wants to be noticed. Because if you were her, you would clap to be noticed. So we may be actually projecting our own motives on people that we are suspecting. Love does not dwell in suspicion. Love believes the best about people. Since we cannot know everything about a person, you cannot know everything about your pastor, you cannot know everything about even your husband, what do you do? Always maintain a room for, a, for an alternative view. He wants to steal. He's closing, he's coming closer to you because he's trying to get something from you. That may be true, but please just keep another room just in case. That is not true. 
That is not true. For in the absence of overwhelming evidence, love chooses to believe the best. Love chooses to assume the best. This week, I just want to leave you with something to think about. How would you want others to respond if someone said or wrote very bad things about you? Would you want them to repost it? Would you want them to share it? Would you want them to celebrate it? To call a friend on phone and say, I'm on you from Canada. Get name a war. Or use it to make new friends or gossip partners. There are some of us that when we hear something bad about somebody and we've been trying to get close to chief, we go to tell chief, hmm, did you know Father Patrick? Because we have heard, we want to use what we have heard to make friends. It would, how would you want others to respond if someone said or wrote bad things about you? When you have found that answer, respond that way. Every single time you hear or read bad things about other people. That's love. For love does to others what we would have others do to us. May God help us to wake up daily and choose love. Rise as we make our confessions this morning. Say with me, I am begotten of love to live love. I am a statement of God's love in my world. Say it like you mean it. I choose today to always believe the best about all men. I walk in wisdom and discernment. I refuse to live in suspicion and paranoia. I am not a cynic or a slanderer. I am an, an example of love and tenderness to other people. My life is making Christ Jesus attractive to all. Shout this one. The love of God is flourishing in me. I am called to love. I serve God by serving his people. I choose to stand fast in love and see the beauty in everyone. I choose to have faith in others and trust that God is also at work in them. I choose to overlook the offenses and failures of other people. I am a safe place of shelter for the people around me. Shout this one. The love of God is flourishing in me. I am God's special messenger of love. My life is marked by love. I am commissioned to love everyone. Especially those who are hard to love. I have the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I bring God's peace and goodness to a lost and despairing world. I am not unduly suspicious about other people's motives. I will always assign the best motives to what others say and do. Shout it, the love of God is flourishing in me. I am an envoy of love. I refuse to be entangled with gossip and suspicion. I am a living example of God's living love. From this day, I intentionally act in loving ways. I choose to take others at their word. I refuse to be critical and judgmental of people. Today, I receive the grace to not only love much but well. I receive the grace to live a lover's life. 
I am flourishing in love. My life will be one that Jesus is proud of. It will draw men to the kingdom and glorify God. Just want you to raise your voice and thank God for the privilege to represent him to our world. Thank him for the privilege to represent him in love, to be his messenger on love. Say, Father, I thank you for the privilege to showcase your love to, to, to the world. I thank you for the privilege to be your envoy of love. I thank you for the privilege to be your message of love to my world. I receive the grace to love as you do. I receive the grace to see as you do. I receive the grace to talk as you do. I receive the grace to love, to embrace men as you do. I receive the wisdom to know how to love in the name of Jesus.